Now, second clip though, man. Outcast manager says he never understood these fools. He said he understood saying these southern guys. Now, let me play exactly what he's talking about when he says this though. Being from New York, managing Outcast at the time, first of all, it was a complete language barrier. Mm. I know what the fuck nobody was talking about <laughs> sitting around the dungeon yeah. with all the niggas. <laughs> yeah. I sit in the room some days with all of them and be looking around like, I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. Artists, y'all might be wondering why we're playing this. I promise this is extremely important for you to understand and get. But okay, we'll figure it out later because it was just a different like language, really. Like, you, especially <laughs> not this TV quiet. version. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying not this TV version, y'all. So, like, I'm talking about. <laughs> The dirt, the, the O and P, <laughs> when them niggas was talking like this, the words blur. Like I ain't know what the hell I was talking Shit about. Shit got down with the fuck. You know yeah, what I'm like, saying? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Did you just say three things? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You just like, did y'all just say three things? <laughs> <laughs> and then periodically you hear fuck New York. You be like, <laughs> heard that loud and clear. Wait, hold right, on now. Like, I know I heard fuck New York somewhere in here. <laughs> so being from New York, managing outcasts at the time. First of all, it was. A <laughs> all right, all right. So the biggest thing. Point number one, that's really important to understand, but there's a multiple that we need to get into, is artist. You see, this is a world-class group, legendary group, Outkast, and their manager said he didn't understand them, what they were saying half the time, literally. But also, they also don't have to like you. And we that we had some recent conversations with some pretty successful people that manage some pretty successful artists. And they don't like the artist's music like that. They respect it and think that they're good at what they do, but that type of music is literally not for them. Yet they're successfully managed in these artists and these artists are doing damn well in their career. That's important to note. And why? Because so many times artists say, I don't want nobody to market my music if they don't believe they don't in believe. me. If they don't believe, you gotta drink the Kool Aid. And you look at me, I'm like I'm a rebel. I'm I'm gonna not drink the Kool Aid just because you told me <laughs> I gotta drink the Kool Aid. No man, hell no, I ain't drinking the Kool Aid now that you say I need to drink it. But like, that's the thing. So many people think that everybody on your team has to believe in your music, mm -hmm. right? In in terms of, I I I take that back. Like think they, they have to love your music, be a fan of your music. No, they don't have to be a fan of you, yes men, yes women, none of that stuff. Now, what you want them to do is believe in what you can accomplish as an artist. Something about your vision. Something about your vision. Yeah. Yeah, they have to also tend to like care about you and want to do right by you. That's yeah. what I, I see to be the commonalities between managers. Because you got to remember, look, ain't nobody going to like everybody's music in general. And if a manager's has the skill set to market different types of artists and diverse artists, then they're probably not going to be the main category and target audience. Scooter Braun managed Ariana Grande. That older white man at this point is not <laughs> anywhere near the target audience for the teenage white girl. Well, I don't want to say just white girl, but you know what I mean. You get the point, mm -hmm. right? They're for teenage girls. That's like where her music was at one period of time. And this is a man frat guy. Yeah. Like it doesn't connect, but he can manage the hell out of her, which he also managed Asher Roth, and he also managed Justin Bieber. He also managed Kanye once at some point, but I, you know, but if we want to talk, you know, starting more ground zero, those artists that I mentioned. So you do your manager doesn't have to like your music in that way, and they don't have to um, like your music if they're your marketer or anybody in your team in in that way, but they need to see some level of packaging for you, right? And oftentimes kind of just, just like you, for lack of better words. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply, it's completely free. But the thing is, 
we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Yeah, I think it, it changes from person to person. Yeah, right. I don't even say like maybe, but yeah, yeah go, go with yeah. What you what do you think for person to person? Yeah, it just changes like some people like like you said. There are managers I know that work with their artists, uh, just because they think the music is amazing. And then there are yeah. some that I met where they're like, hey, like this person's content is amazing. Like yo, I can see his yeah his vision and the way he's able to string it together, or or you know, some that just like the way the artist performs. Yo, he's an amazing performer. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you meet so many different people. That if you ask them enough questions, you can start to figure out like why, or they can start to justify like why they rock with their artists. And it's not always the music, you know, which it which used to baffle me because you meet so many artists who get offended if it's not the music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, Yo, you don't think the music is great? It's like, no, nah, this might not be the target demographic. But if I understand how to put it in front of the target demographic. You know what I'm saying? Am I still not just as valuable in this relationship? And that's what used to get me, bro. Like, I've literally had conversations with ours before. I'd be like, yo, like, just because I don't like it don't mean I don't know what to do with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, they don't get that, I just though. don't like it, bro. Like, it's just not for me. But, yo, like, you clearly believe in it. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing some high-quality things around it. The team seems pretty solid. Like, yeah, I'll put my skills in this this situation and see what happens, you know? But I still don't fuck with it. Bro, that gave me a flashback. <laughs> There's this Breakfast Club interview where Machine Gun Kelly is trying to get Charlemagne to fuck with him, yeah. like his music. And like Charlemagne keeps going, I think you're a good guy. I don't like your music, yeah. basically. And he just, like, he can't take it, right? He really want. I think he, like, freestyled and everything. And then Charlemagne was just like, nah, I'm still not feeling it. Yeah. Or, whatever. <laughs> or whatever. But I think you're a good guy. And that's kind of what you want a lot of sometimes, right? It. it as long as they like rock with you, they have the skill set to do what you need them to do. You can't expect some of these, especially really seasoned managers who are older, who, to be your primary demographic. Yeah, yeah, bro. I think it, and it, it's like a safe space for artists, right? Like when you're first coming up as an artist, or I would argue when most artists are first coming up, their first um, round of help is usually just fans. You know what I'm saying? Like there are people who are fans of them reaching out to them. Yeah, helping them out. So I feel like they just get stuck in that mentality a little bit. Like, yeah. oh, you trying to help me out? You must be a fan. It's like, nah, bro. Like, I just thought I could help over. Right. You know? See, exactly. That's that's not the business way of thinking about things. Like you said, I just saw something that I could help with. I saw a place that I could provide value. Yeah. And then I'm providing that value based on my expertise. Based on my <laughs> expertise. What you probably don't want is them to think that your music is straight trash. Like, even if they don't like your style of music. Because that's just not them. They need to at least think you're probably good at your style of music. Yeah, I have to like, I know me personally, I'll have to maybe not like it, but I can't hate it. Right. You know, like I got to be like, uh, this is this is going to be objectively good to somebody. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's 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 all you're looking for. Yeah. They can say this is objectively good to somebody. I can help you find that somebody yeah. and then manage what it looks like to explore and build in that audience. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's about it. And I, I know that sounds underwhelming and wow, but that is what it is. And funny enough, though, it's crazy how globalization has affected music and culture so much because this guy talking about his um not being able to, I said this guy, Outcast manager talking about not being able to understand Outcast back in the day. Sound like my dad talking about when he came to the South because he's from Newark, New Jersey. Mm. And he would, just be like, way. what's up, what? He's from Joe Budden way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> and he'd be like, yo, I never understood what these folks were saying. Like, never. And like one thing, he he would always be like, he was like, man, I remember I was in a club one time. Everybody was like, go who? Uh, out of here, go who? Uh, side of here. I was like, I didn't know what the hell they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> and you remember that show, song, right? <laughs> he was like, and he just had all these oh, stories man. of like, you know, I'll like, be talking to somebody. How far away is it? He's like, oh, you just go down the road a piece. Like, like, what does this mean? Like, the language was so different. But it's a beautiful thing back in the day because you could go to different places and get completely different experiences. Yeah, bro. Like, going to different regions was damn near like going to different countries today. Yeah, bro. It was like walking through Narnia. You know <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's, cause it would be so, it's so funny to hear, like, those type of stories. Because now we don't get as shocked because we experience so much of each other online. Yeah. And 
because of online, we experience a lot of the same culture. So it's the same when we go to these places and then you get rid of radio, right? The way it was before, because radio is now homogenized to they're pretty much just playing the hits and you have a couple of companies pretty much owning all the stations, right? Yeah. We don't get as much of an experience of going to a different state and you just driving and then you change the radio station to the local shit and you hear some shit you never hear before and in a completely different style, which I miss that part. I'm not old enough for the full, like completely misunderstanding other regions, yeah. but I am old enough for like riding around and being a different state and the shit is just some completely different shit. Yeah. I feel like that hasn't happened in a long time. For me personally, that hasn't happened in a long time. Like yeah. maybe like. I can't put a year on it. It's been a long ass song. That's crazy. I didn't even think about that until you said right. that. I just remember finding this one Ace Hood song one day being in Virginia for the first time. It was like, turns on the radio. I was like, oh, I don't remember what song it was. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, oh, shit. Like, Ace Hood. It was some shit that was like just bringing him back at the time. But I don't know. But that shit was like crazy because I was coming from down here and I was like, oh, they are not playing. Ace Hood, Ace Hood, yeah, back home in Atlanta, bro. Like, nah, this is not, this is not coming through the speaker. So I do miss that aspect of it. But. I don't know, man. In a way, as bad as it is, I think it makes culture a little bit easier to navigate, at least, because it's all just internet culture. So, you know, if you can speak internet, you can you you good everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. Yeah. We're sacrificing the unique and different <laughs> for the same and convenience. And you're never going to have anybody fight convenience. That's like the human's... <sighs> Evolving into the, one race, the, the human's fate, right? The, yeah. the, the it, it's our curse. Like we, we, it's hard for us to fight convenience, man. Yeah, bro. It's hard, even to our detriment. We, it's hard for us to fight convenience. You know, look, the the bad food that we eat, all everything. Look, man. Hey, it's convenient though. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I be thinking about like the the conspiracy theories. It's like we are gonna all merge into one race. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be one language. I'm like, but that's memes, bro. Memes are something that every race. Every gender, yeah, you know what I'm saying every sexuality, every nation, everywhere, bro, can will all unite over like a meme, bro. That shit's crazy, bro. We talked about this yeah. last week. Remember, <laughs> I, I I told EJ that he looked like the race that everybody's gonna be. You weren't there for that? No, I wasn't there for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, took that up. I forgot how we got there, but I was like, bro, I was like, everybody's gonna look like you. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that. <laughs> You can see it now, right? That's funny as fuck. That's funny as fuck. You got a little bit of everything in them. And so, I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> I think, like, of course, again, we know everybody doesn't have to love your music in that way, especially the higher and higher up and the more people you deal with in business, you aren't going to have that expectation. But that doesn't mean there is no value to people in your business stack. All right. They might have some other type of value. They could be close on your team and have exceeding value. But that part just is what it is. And on the other side, though, again, the understanding, man, I I, under, I understand the convenience of culture today and I appreciate culture today. It's not me <laughs> hating, but it does suck also not to have those differentiated experiences in our fight to like I'm of the 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 side of things where people say, Oh, we're all the same race and everybody's the same. Da 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 da. And, and you know, I don't see color. I don't like that shit, right? <laughs> Not according to this meme. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I prefer people to experience the differences, acknowledge the differences, and accept the differences. Yeah. You know, and just not be assholes about it. That's all it is, you know, because the differences is a funny shit, right? That's the cool shit. That's the. Yeah. So I hope it look, you know, if we homogenize to the point of a billion EJs, Hopefully I'm not here for it. <laughs> now, with that being said, though, 